Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Anthony Franklin, Partner Success Manager uh, for North America uh, here at Gertum. And we are going to uh, have a great webinar. I hope you guys are excited. Um, you know, we will have a quick question and answer section at the end of this. Uh, so hold your questions till the end, um, write those down, and then share those on the Q&A section uh, at the end. So. You know, we love providing information, um, how to's, new features, uh, new ways to use the Wylon platform. And this in turn, you know, helps our partners to deliver more value to fleet managers and to, you know, other customers that they have. So hopefully you guys are getting a lot of value from these webinars. And uh, today's topic, uh, we are going to be talking about how to track without GPS. And uh, that might, might seem like a, a misnomer here, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about how we can do that. So, um, so the agenda for today, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about uh, no GPS, no problem, right? And, and how you can, um, you know, how GPS even works in the first place and um, some of the problems that can occur and how to get around some of those. Um, we're also going to talk about some settings in Wylon for uh, LBS, um, which is kind of an alternative um, or something that can work with GPS. So we'll, we'll go through that. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, monitoring and notifications um, that are you know, based on uh, LBS. So um, again, hope, hopefully you guys are excited. And I think there's a lot to be learned from sort of uh, what we're gonna go through today. So hopefully uh, you guys get a lot of value from it. So. So let's start off a little bit with understanding uh, the global positioning system, because um, or GPS as we call it. That that, that uh, acronym's sort of thrown around there, and um, let, I want to explain it a little bit. So the global positioning system, uh, you know, or originally Navstar GPS, it's basically a satellite-based radio navigation system that's owned by the United States government and it's operated by the United States Air Force, right? Um, and at some point in the past, they allowed uh, everyone to you know, be able to access that. And it's a global nav navigation satellite system that essentially provides geolocation and time information uh, as long as you have a GPS receiver. And it's, uh, this can be done anywhere on Earth or even near the Earth. Um, and, and so, the important thing to understand about GPS is you have to have an unobstructed line of sight to four or more uh, GPS satellites, right? So here I've got a, a nice little um, picture here that kind of walks you through some of those steps. So the first step is that each satellite basically broadcasts their own radio signals uh, with the location, uh, status, and time, right? Um, it travels at the speed of light, 300,000 kilometers per second. And then um, basically the devices, hardware telematics devices, they have um, you know, receivers, uh, modules built into them to receive radio signals that denote their exact time of arrival. And uh, they do some ca calculations uh, based upon the clock that's in the GPS tracker, as well as the atomic clock, which is on these very, very expensive satellites, right? And then once, you know, a GPS receiver knows its distance from at least four satellites, uh, it uses geometry to determine its exact location um, on Earth. Um, and so, you know, for, for the nerds out there, that, that process is called trilateration, right? Um, which is basically a sophisticated version of triangulation. So that's how it works, right? That's how you know where this vehicle, this person, this asset is at in any particular time, right? Now, so now that we understand that, um, we have to sort of understand a little bit of the downsides that can occur, not always, but can occur using GPS. And um, before we talk about LBS instead of GPS, I think, you know, we gotta talk about what are some of the reasons why GPS alone can be a poor choice, right? And I think there's a few reasons. I think number one, uh, signal loss, right? So as mentioned, you have to have an unobstructed view of the satellites. And so typically that, that you know, in some areas that can't happen, right? So if you're in a dense metro area like New York City, with this picture on the right, 
uh, essentially you are um, going to have you know all of these buildings and these signals are relatively weak these GPS signals right and so obstacles such as you know mountains tall buildings um, you know uh, places underground they're gonna block it uh, you know I live in a, a, a you know a one floor you know place and even GPS is blocked in my one floor place imagine you know, 30 floors of concrete on top of that, right? It's just difficult for the GPS radio signals to actually get through. So uh, it's important to understand that, that sometimes that happens. And in certain geographies, this is a normal problem, right? And so you have to take that into account in, in building your business, right? Um, the other things to think about, though, is power consumption. It, you know, as our partners know best, you know, typical GPS devices drain you know, battery and the GPS um, is one is the biggest drain on battery, right? And you know they're you know always searching for signal and uh, depending on the reporting configuration, um, you know there may be a significant drain of power from these devices. Now, if it's hardwired into the vehicle, that's fine, but rechargeable devices, especially, must consider this because they have a limited you know, power supply. And so we have to take that into account. Why GPS may not be the best option, right, at some points, right? Uh, the other thing, too, I, I think is, you know, precise location is not needed in, in, in a lot of applications, okay? And it's just the honest truth, right? Um, you know, I've talked with both end users and partners that sometimes the use case is honestly, uh, you know, it's just not necessary. So I'll give you an example. Um, let's say we have a someone using tracking uh, to bind drivers, like we talked about last time I did a, a webinar, right? So they're using trackers in a way to sort of uh, measure how many hours that driver worked, right? And so in that case, maybe they're not really looking to know exactly where that person is. They, they, they just need to know generally where they are, but we need to know the hours that they logged into the vehicle and drove around and the hours, and then when they logged out, right? So in that case, you don't really need precise location. You know, other fields, and there's a ton of them out there, but, you know, things like construction, um, we know if they're, we know they're at the job site, we don't know, we need to know exactly where they're at. Um, asset tracking. Um, Maybe, you know, we need to know when they leave the warehouse or the port, but it's not necessarily important to get precise location, right? So, um, so the question then becomes, what is LBS, right? And LBS is, stands for location-based service, right? And essentially what location-based service does is, you know, uh, basically instead of getting the location from satellites, we're basically cross-checking the base station information we're getting from a device that we're normally getting anyway, and we're cross-checking that information with our database uh, that we have here at Gertum. And, you know, we have a database of over 50 million points bound to cell stations, right? And so this is really key because, um, you know, we can know generally where they're at just based upon um, you know, the cellular base station, right? And since, now it's important to understand, since we only know the base station uh, information, it could be anywhere in that, you know, vicinity uh, that that base station covers, right? So it's not, it's very dependable, but it's just not as accurate because again, you're not getting precise location. Um, you're, you're getting kind of a, a general area of where that could be. And again, those areas of coverage of each mobile uh, base station, right, uh, or cell base station, I should say, you know, they cover different areas. So in cities, it's much more dense, and they cover maybe a half a mile to a mile, um, you know, range, uh, whereas out in suburban areas or even remote areas, it can cover anywhere from one mile to, you know, five miles or 10 miles on, a, on a perfect conditions. So, um, but know that it's very dependable, right? Uh, Gertum you know, we've detected asset location for 96% of queries uh, that didn't have GPS. So, um, you know, again, it's very dependable and we can get that data 
Um, again, it just need to know where that base station is and need to know how to configure that in the platform. So let's say you want to use LBS, and again, um, you know, LBS stands for that location-based service, right? Um, LBS should send at least four parameters, and I've underlined those here, but uh, the four parameters are uh, MCC, MNC, LAC, and cell ID, and these stand for um, mobile country code, mobile network code, um, a location area code, and then the cell ID, which is the cell tower ID. And essentially what this allows us to do is know the country, know the network in that country, know the area in that country, and then the particular cell tower information in that area. So it's like a target here, right? And each one of these are necessary to really target in and, and to know, you know, the, the, the area that this device is reporting from and generally where the unit is at at that particular time. Um, so, so there's some other settings. Once we have that, you know, those uh, parameters coming from the device, uh, then it's pretty simple, right? So here I have a, a picture just of some simple settings that you can put in place um, so that you can get location-based service information, right? And on the left, we have the settings on the platform, which need to be enabled in order to enable LBS. So what you do is you open the unit properties, and under the advanced tab, right, you're going to enable, you scroll down a bit, and you enable the message validity filtration right here, right? You click that box, and then you also want to click the box that says allow positioning by cellular base station. Right, um, and this is you know pretty important here because um, again, you, it's important to understand that you know it's not either or. You don't have to use LBS or GPS, although there are things that you can do to configure the device not to report GPS and just get LBS information. You can actually put these settings in place, and then what will happen is when the device does not receive you know, GPS coordinates, right? Um, essentially, it's going to, the fallback is LBS, and we're going to position it by a cellular base station, okay? Uh, the picture on the right shows the icon which is displayed when LBS is being used for positioning. And remember, this is, uh, it's not the either or situation. You can use GPS normally, and then LBS can be used, you know, only when there's no GPS data available. Um, but if you're looking to conserve, let's say, power or, um, you know, if the use case is not necessary, you can actually uh, put it where you don't use that GPS at all, right? So up to you. Uh, here is a little bit more of a zoomed in on the left what the monitoring panel looks like. Uh, as you can see here, the green, um, you know, uh, the, the green icon here uh, basically tells us that the unit is, you know, unit data has been received with the help of LBS. And then if it's grayed out here, uh, it just, you know, we have gotten data uh, from LBS, but it's just outdated information, right? Um, on the right, it actually shows what the icon, so the icon actually changes on the map when LBS is being used. And, you know, this icon changes to signify that there's a range where this unit could be, right? Um, and again, that can vary depending on, you know, some, some factors. So, um, so the icons are displayed in dotted line circles, right? So you see the dotted line circle here, and um, and it shows that this is LBS location, right? So um, at this point, you know we're seeing uh, you know a, a lot of things here, but I want to show you live here a, a little bit of some of the notifications. So taking a step back, you know we want to sort of evaluate. Okay, let's say I want to use LBS monitoring, right? Uh, are there some different type of notifications that I should be using when it comes to, you know, monitoring by LBS? Well, you can actually use all of the notifications that you have been using, but there's a slight, you know, setting change that you want to have, and, uh, and let's do that now, right? So here we have... Um, a you know the our platform here right so uh, we are on the notifications tab here and there's two notifications that i want to review quickly i want to review the 
um, you know, two, once a, a trigger type, and it's called a value leap, right, which is going to be used uh, typically in LBS monitoring. And then I also want to use uh, talk about a kind of, um, you know, an action that a notification can do um, when it comes to modifying groups, right? So, and I'll give you just two basic examples on how to use that, right? So the first one here is a cold chain temperature alert, right? So if I go here to the cold chain temperature alert, um, and let's say, you know, I'm choosing the vehicle, and then here I'm using a sensor value trigger. Now, some people would use a parameter and a message, but a sensor is just gonna take the sensor that we've built and essentially is going to uh, evaluate that sensor with certain conditions, right? So here we've got a value leap, a value range is I believe by default, but value leap. So you choose the sensor type, which I've done sen uh, a temperature sensor, the name uh, of the, the, the actual sensor here. So, you know, typically, uh, you know, it could be, you know, something like this, but you could actually just call it temperature sensor, whatever the sensor in the unit properties is called that you want, what's we, what you want to call it, right? And then here, um, you want to see here the delta, which is very important. So the delta just means the change, right? So a delta of three means that the sensor goes up by three, it's going, the notification will trigger and an action will be taken, right? And this is very good for, you know, let's say cold chain, right? And we want to know maybe a small value that's changed and we want to be notified that, hey, it's not within acceptable freezing temperatures and we need to figure out, you know, what needs to happen, uh, the container needs to be checked, uh, you know, some of those types of things, right? And of course, after that, once you set that up, you can do notifications uh, as normal um, and, and then save that notification, um, putting in the, uh, the message that you want, and of course, um, putting in some of those different settings that are gonna enable this. But typically, this is uh, a value leap notification is something that you would use um, for this, right? And then clicking enable. It's important to understand that Again, LBS is not for precise location. So normally you're not using things like speed because the location's not that precise. So you're gonna be using things like temperature sensors, you're gonna be using things like light sensors, uh, door unlocked sensors, and our platform can build notifications based upon uh, some of those sensors, right? Uh, the second thing, uh, uh, notification I wanna show is, you know, a, you know, it could be built on any notification, but really it's an action type called, you know, modifying a group, right? So if I, let's say we have a, a certain port, right? And I just, I show you guys here a little bit. Let's say we have a container coming in and, you know, it comes into the port here, right? Or, you know, maybe closer to the ocean or something like that. So maybe you don't know exactly where this unit's at, but you want to build a geofence that's large enough so that you know, hey, this container entered the port. And that's a big deal for you. You wanna know all of the containers, all of the packages that have entered a certain port or are exiting that port, right? So what you would do is you would, you know, click the unit, right? You would do a geofence trigger type, right? And of course we want to know inside the geofence. So when it comes into the geofence, we want to be notified. So here I've already done that, port A. And here what we do is you can add any of the normal ones that we talk about, but I want to explore here a little bit this modify unit groups, right? So what happens is you can actually modify the group that this unit is a part of, right? So instead you can add it to the entering port group, right? And then maybe remove it from another group, right? And so what happens is the platform will you know, automatically do that for you in groups uh, that are on the monitoring uh, tab. Um, and so this is an easy way to basically put all of your units or all of the containers in a entering port, a on way to destination, or at sea if it's overseas containers, right? And so you're able to kind of stage each one of your units um, by modifying the unit group, right? Um, 
I do want to highlight here, uh, if you are going to be using uh, these types of uh, you know, triggers in, in processing LBS messages, right? Um, this would require location, right? And even though the location's not as accurate, you want to click this process LBS messages that's going to be right here, right? And you click on this, and of course, it will uh, establish that. If you go to the monitoring tab here, I've got uh, a group asset tracking, then we've got auto fleet, and then we've got an entering port group, right? And so what happens is when this unit comes into the port, right, it's going to be, in, it's going to automatically come into this group, right? And then when it leaves the port, this port, it's going to enter, uh, it's going to be a part of the leaving port group, right? So uh, just an easy way to see kind of what stage each one of your units are at, all right? So um, that's a little bit about uh, you know LBS monitoring, and so hopefully that's that's helpful for you because uh, again uh, I think there are there can be some cost savings, some power savings, and uh, you know in some applications those are not necessary. So let's say you're thinking to yourself, okay, uh, Anthony, I want to be able to use LBS tracking, right? Uh, um, how do I do that? Well, you want to follow the following steps, right? First of all, you want to find the use cases in which LBS may be useful for your business, right? And just brainstorm a little bit, right? And, and think about, okay, is it really necessary for them to have GPS? Now, some people want it, you know, and, and obviously our, our platform can do that, but um, there may be some great applications of which LBS may be useful, okay? So do a little brainstorming. Secondly, you want to have a device um, and, and, and decide on a device, right? Um, for partners out there listening, um, you can reach out to your account manager and or your partner success manager to, to learn more, right? We have experience with over 1,500 plus device models. And so we can kind of point you in some of the right directions for devices that are right for your use case, right? Um, and then you want to decide on a device that obviously uses LBS and, and reports those parameters, okay? Um, then the next step is, you know, getting those, buying those devices and then configuring those devices. So you want to make sure those devices are configured to report the, the required parameters for LBS. And then lastly, um, you want to turn LBS on and on the platform. And again, we talked about enabling message validity filtration and positioning by cellular base station options, right? And so it's pretty easy to use LBS. There's not a ton that needs to be done. Uh, you do need to make sure the hardware reports those parameters, um, and then you also need to do, as always, and as always our partners do, spend the time with your client to understand their needs and to understand if LBS could be the best fit for them, right? They may not know what LBS is, but you can help them uh, as a, a partner. So we wanna thank you guys for, for watching. Um, it's been awesome. Um, and so at this time, we do wanna open this up for questions that you may have um, that, that came up during the presentation. So uh, I'll, I'll take a few minutes here and wait for you guys' questions and we'll, we'll, we'll try to answer those as best we can.
Okay, guys. Um, hey, the questions are coming in. This is awesome. This is awesome. So um, uh, there, there is uh, someone that asked here, uh, is there any parameter to see the exact accuracy of the LBS at a given area? And the answer is no to that, because the, the, the problem with this is um, this is actually quite complex of a question. Um, what's the accuracy of LBS, right? We know it's in the area, right? But you, essentially what you're asking is what's the working range of a cellular base station? And um, without going into too much detail, right, the range which mobile devices can connect reliably to a, a cell site it's not a fixed figure, right? So it's gonna depend on a number of factors, um, the height of the antenna that's in that area, because um, again, uh, there needs to be sort of line of sight propagation. Um, you wanna, uh, it, it can depend on the frequency of the signal that's in use, right? Uh, um, the transmitters sort of rated power, um, you know, a, a whole host of things, right? Um, you know, there could be reflection and absorption by you know, of uh, radio energy by nearby buildings. I mean, it, it's fairly complicated and there's not a, a set parameter that just tells us the accuracy. So I think it's a great question. Uh, if you figure out that equation, let me know. But uh, right now there's no devices that uh, tell us a parameter and uh, how accurate the LBS is. Um, uh, and, and again, we know it's not as accurate as GPS, uh, but uh, for those use cases in which uh, it may be accurate enough, right? So, but great question. Uh, I, I keep those coming. Okay, so we're going to answer another question here uh, by Robert. Uh, can you please tell how much more battery life uh, do we have if we choose LBS over GPS? Great question, Robert. Um, the, the problem with this is, is this is another um, answer where it depends. It's not a fixed figure. The problem is uh, each uh, hardware device uses a different battery, right? And uh, the battery type depends on a large uh, portion of this. Another large portion of this is how many connections does it make? How often does the device actually report in the first place, right? So th there are some considerations here. Uh, the best way to figure that out, I think, is just to go test it, right? So take a, a, you know, one of the trackers and use it for a week uh, on, on normally uh, for GPS, and then take that same tracker used at the same activity and reporting and then uh, use that at LBS, and then you're able to see sort of the power consumption that's been used. Um, so, um, you know, it's, it's one of those kind of uh, things our, our, our integrator partners need to uh, sort of um, try out so that they can share that data with their customers. So uh, thanks for asking. Yes, uh, so Luciano uh, asked, can I use LBS for any device, right? Um, you know, lots of devices have this, um, not every device. You need to check with the manufacturer um, if they report those parameters, you know, um, in, for that device, or it can be configured to report those parameters. But uh, there are a good number of devices that, that do offer this. Um, and you can go to our hardware page and there is a check mark box where you can filter LBS positioning um, on our hardware page. So hopefully that, that gives you some help. Hi, um, uh, Joel asked, uh, 
how to use LBS if our uh, tag doesn't have this parameter. Um, there's not a way, right? So uh, essentially we're not able to uh, get the uh, positioning of this device if it doesn't report those parameters uh, because we do need all four of those parameters. Hi, Felix. Uh, hey, thanks for asking your question. Uh, so when both are live simultaneously, GPS will always have the priority, right? So GPS will always have the priority because it's more accurate, right? Um, LBS is just the fallback. And so it's important to uh, understand that if you want LBS only, the device has to be configured not to send GPS data. Um, uh, but uh, you know, the best case scenario is when you have both um, because it, it is going to be just much more accurate. So, Okay, guys, uh, I think that's it for our time here today. I hope this has been uh, helpful to you in adding value. Uh, of course, I, I do want to remind you guys that uh, we do have uh, telematics coming up, and uh, this is our 10th anniversary of our Gertrude Partner Conference. Um, it, it's going to be amazing, and we hope you'll join us. Uh, it's an annual conference. Uh, it happens in Minsk, Belarus, which is where our headquarters is at from July 30th to August 1st, and this is an amazing opportunity to network with partners from other countries, and a lot of times they've solved things in a different way than we've solved them, uh, you know, in our own country, right? And so I think that, that there's, there's a value in collaboration and what types of devices that they're using and those sorts of things. Speaking on devices, you know, you can connect with hardware manufacturers. We have a huge exhibition of hardware partners that are gonna be there. And every one of them have already been integrated with the Wylon platform. So that's, that, that's a huge advantage and you get to talk to them face to face. Uh, you're also gonna be able to listen to case studies, uh, IoT experts, and then uh, attend live training sessions which are really going to, I think, add value when you come back. Um, there's also a huge party that we have with our partners. Um, and, and so if you want to participate, go to my.gertum.com and register to confirm your participation. And if you've already registered, please buy your ticket. And, you know, so we can start planning, um, you know, uh, where the stay is going to be and all of those good things. And if you need any help in planning your trip, Reach out to your part, uh, I'm sorry, your account manager um, and your partner success manager, and they can help you, right? So lastly, um, I do want to say a special thank you. Um, as many of you may know, we're on the cusp of over 2 million units connected to the uh, platform, right? And this is not possible without our partners. And so this webinar is going to be posted on our YouTube page for our reference. We want to just say thank you to our partners. And uh, also partners, if you have an idea for an upcoming webinar that you think would be great for us to talk about, reach out to your partner success manager and say, hey, um, I have a good idea. Uh, what if we did a webinar on this? This would be super helpful for my business. So uh, we're open to those ideas and we want to make these great for you guys. So. Thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day.